Hello, I'm Ari, your host at Episteme Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to science, tech, and innovation. Today, my guest is Dr. François Xavier Pellet. He holds a PhD in medicine, in biology and medicine from the University of Lille in France. He is also an expert in the science of anti-aging and longevity, former group leader at the, at the Mediterranean Institute of Life Science, led by the famous professor Miroslav Radman. Uh, Dr. Pelé is also a serial biotech uh, entrepreneur. He's currently uh, the founder, CEO of a new venture, the Cell Culture Lab, dedicated to skin rejuvenation. Nice to have you, Dr. Pelé. How, how are you today? Very good. Thank you. Good morning. And thank you for inviting me to this podcast. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure because you have a, you have a very interesting background and, and a professional experience. And I think uh, um, the audience of this podcast will, will, very, will enjoy to, to hear about uh, your path. So um, the interview will be organized in three, three parts. Uh, we will talk about your backstory. Uh, who are you? Uh, where are you from? Uh, what motivates you um, when you were young. Then we will talk about, um, let's say more about the transition from uh, the academic path to uh, the industrial and entrepreneurship path. And then of course, we will, we will, we'll talk about in deep about uh, your new venture, the Cell Culture Lab. Would you agree? Yeah, perfect. Fantastic. So uh, Dr. Pelé, uh, who are you? <laughs> and <laughs> could you remember a little bit about yourself when you were young, um, how the science spirit emerged in your mind and eventually even uh, the innovator and entrepreneur spirit, uh, was, was, it, was it already there when you, were, when you were a child or a young student? Uh, that's a good question. So yeah, I am um, actually, science came first, that's for sure. Uh, I grew up in the countryside in France, uh, in a village close to a city called Angers. And uh, I spent most of my childhood uh, outdoor and uh, in middle of nature. And I was already passionate from as far as I can remember. My interest was uh, very much into animals and their behavior. And so I was basically a born biologist. Hmm. And uh, as I grew older, this passion keep on, keep on growing really. Uh, and when I reach uh, high school, so about 14, 15 years old, uh, that's when a new passion actually start to emerge, which was uh, the interest into aging and longevity. So that's actually quite young <laughs> to have that kind of, uh, of interest, but it was more than an interest. It basically started to, to, to be like an obsession already at that age. Uh, I remember when I was in high school telling my classmates that when I'm older, I will find a cure for aging. And um, so, yeah, I guess I just um, came to realize at that age that uh, aging is the thing the most likely to kill me uh, and to, you know, that affects everybody, uh, literally everybody on this planet. Um, and so it was for me something that was worth dedicating my life to. So then all of my education, all of the things that came after that uh, went into that direction. So that makes actually things much easier when you already know in which direction you want to go. It's fascinating because uh, you have, you know, uh, it's very a la mode uh, now to say that uh, aging is a disease, uh, is even the, the, the cause of the cause is, you know, the, the mother of all disease. Uh, but you have already this instinct to, to you know, you, 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 you knew that aging was not something natural, you know, something that, okay, it's life and we, can, we can't do anything about it. You already have this instinct that to know that we can do something about it. This is fascinating uh, because um, I am myself a, a, a biologist and I think um, I, I, I have, a, you know, course in university from, uh, from gerontologists and, and other uh, developmental biologists who told us that, you know, aging is something that we can't do anything because it's entropy, it's physical law, you know, something like that. But in fact, now we have more and more evidence that it's a disease, you know, it's the, the, the cause of all disease. Uh, and we can, we can cure it. Uh, we, we, we have serious um, uh, now, um, well, let's say, uh, evidence that we can, we can, we can find cure against, against aging. 
so this is fascinating how uh, very young you already uh, have this instinct. Uh, is it is it something that happened in your life that you you, you identify aging as the enemy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I guess somehow you 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 can see it like that. But it was really, yeah, I I didn't um, I didn't want to see aging as a fatality from the start. That's true. Uh, I I couldn't understand why it would I mean I understand why it happens to some degree. But uh, I couldn't see why we couldn't do anything about it, basically, because, you know, uh, saying that it's natural doesn't mean much. Uh, I mean, the virus and bacteria are natural as well, but we're still trying to fight them really hard. So um, there was for me no reason not to consider aging in that way. And so, yeah, I, I actually organized uh, all of my, like I said, since it was early on, I organized my education uh, to, 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 to be more... Uh, practically useful in the search of, of a cure for aging. So my, my background is also a little bit uh, unusual in that way. So I try to, well, basically the way I see it, aging is one of the most complex thing you can, uh, you can look at in terms of biology because it's, it's basically as complex as biology itself. So it, it, you know, it impacts every level of, of uh, organization in, in uh, so you know, at the molecular level, cellular level uh, organs, everything is, is impacted by aging. And so my, my view was that the more I understand at many different levels, the more I will be efficient at finding solutions. So I, I, I studied my background as, a, let's say, biologist, general biologist. Uh, like I said, I had very big interest in, in nature. So uh, even the environment was something that, that I was interested in. And um, in, during my bachelor, I switched to biochemistry. So I went to smaller scale. Then I actually finished uh, my second year of uh, master degree as a, as a chemist. So organic chemistry, so even smaller scale. And, uh, and after that, well, I had a year where I was working uh, as a chemist. And then when I came back to do my PhD, I did a PhD in bioinformatics. Mm. So, quite different. Um, the main interest for me was not so much bioinformatics, even so it's very interesting. It was more the aspect of systems biology. Mm. So in systems biology, in all these omics that you see, you cannot just look at one thing at a time. You're looking at, you know, whole thing happening at once. So this is something that's very important when you're tackling aging and not all biologists can basically, um, let's say, embrace the complexity as much as a system biologist. So I, I, I finished my PhD relatively uh, quickly actually. And after that, I started working with uh, Miroslav Radman in a lab where they were doing completely different things as well. So my postdoc, very short postdoc actually, uh, included, uh, well, evolution was a big topic. Uh, and, and I will explain later how it came very much in handy in my, in my life. Um, uh, bacteriology also, uh, genetic, well, many different aspects of aging, but this is, I mean, Miroslav Sabrahman's lab is really tackling very, very fundamental questions. So this was also something interesting in that sense. And only after that did I switch towards more uh, applied science and I worked with the industry. So um, in... When you join uh, Miro, Miroslav Radman lab in Paris, uh, just to remind for, for the audience that Miroslav Radman is a, a leading scientist in the, in the DNA repair uh, system. He's so therefore, and, the, and DNA repair system is one of the key cause of aging when, when it's disturbed, it's functioning. <clears throat> so he's uh, uh, maybe uh, one of the greatest scientists in this era. So you, you join it. Uh, his lab, you work in a, in a postdoc, and then you started really to, to understand the mechanism of aging, you know, to, to put all the pieces together. And then you, um, what was the next step? You, you then join a, um, um, a private company, right? As a, as a researcher. Yeah. So basically how things happen, it's also interesting to, to, to put yeah, Miro back in the, in the context, because like you said, his main research and what he's most famous for is DNA repair. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but when I came to his lab, he actually, uh, he was studying uh, some extremophile organisms, some bacteria that were very tough because they were, they were able to repair their DNA in very extreme condition after uh, gamma radiation and things like that. And basically that's the moment in his career when he did the shift between his interest to DNA towards his interest in protein, because basically he realized that the reason they were able to fix their DNA is because their protein, their enzyme, uh, were still uh, functional and able to fix the DNA. So he made really this big shift in his career a few years before I arrived in his lab. And it's also about that time that he really started to be interested in, in, in the questions of aging and, and, and longevity. And yeah, so, so I, I, I got hired in his lab mostly out of my passion for this kind of topic. And uh, actually, Miro was uh, already uh, a friend with the, the, the owner of a company called Naos, mm -hmm. which is a cosmetic company uh, with brands like the most famous one being Bioderma. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and basically, uh, they, they, they arranged that my salary would be paid by this company. So I enter, let's say, by a small door. The, the, the world of, uh, of uh, industry. But yet I was still working in Miroslav Radman's lab, very fundamental uh, lab, and working on very, uh, very fundamental questions as well. Uh, and, and you moved in Croatia, right? Because now-, now that's, you... Yes, that's a few years after that. So I stayed in Paris in Miro's lab. So it's an inserm lab for about five, five six years. And, uh, and then, Miro had also a, an institute, a whole institute in Croatia, who was dedicated to, well, actually to all biology, but mostly uh, with the intent of doing something about aging as well. And he invited me to start my own lab there. So I was relatively young postdoc. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I wasn't postdoc technically because I was paid by the industry. So I was a researcher, but um, it was very good, you know, very good opportunity for me, uh, and and the uh, and the company that that was uh, financing so far just my salary. The research was still paid by uh, by Miro's lab at the time by Inserm. Uh, then was they, they 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 covered. They were basically financing the institute, and they covered the, 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 all the cost of the research uh, that was done uh, after that. So I stayed uh, about five five to six more years in Croatia in that, in that context, working in metals with one uh, fit in industry and another in more, more fundamental research. As a group leader at, uh, at Miroslav Institute, but also as a director of research, uh, focusing on the anti-aging and longevity for now at the same time. Yes, yes, yes. And could you tell us about uh, a little bit about the specificity of doing uh, this kind of research, you know, uh, one fit on the fundamental side and one fit for the industry, uh, how uh, the reporting was organized, what, what the industry, uh, what now was expecting from your research or do you have a full uh, uh, green light to do whatever you want or, or they want a specific application, specific outcome? How, 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 how was it, how did, how did you organize this, uh, this relationship, this dialectic between fundamental and industrial research? Yeah, so this, this is very, unusual uh, situation, I would say. And it has really some big advantages. It has some drawback as well, but it has huge uh, advantages. The main one being, uh, well, budget, first of all. I basically never had to look for a budget for my research, which is, you know, something that almost all researchers dream about. Uh, that's probably you heard, <laughs> you heard before. Uh, the main drawback being, of course, that my ability to publish was very much restricted, almost down to nothing. So I did, I did manage to publish one or two papers during my long time, uh, over 10 years uh, working there, as long as the paper were far away from what I was directly doing. Uh, and we also had two uh, patents under my name uh, that were published during that time. So... Uh, yeah, so that's that's the main uh, that's the main let's say positive and, and, and negative aspect. But to be honest, um, I also had uh, very very much of freedom 
during this whole time. So I, I was, especially the first few years uh, when I was in Paris, it was basically total freedom. I, I, I had no much uh, management from, from uh, Naos. They were expecting me to bring them new, new things. And the best way to do that is to, is to let me do my thing. And even in, even in medals, uh, the situation was still similar. So I was reporting, of course, uh, on a regular basis on everything I was doing. And uh, yeah, and so this, this was all a very, uh, let's say, healthy and productive uh, relationship between uh, Naos, uh, Medils and Miro and, and myself. So this, this was uh, productive in that sense, yes. Wow, this is great to, to hear that uh, a private company uh, funded and supported uh, basic research uh, with full green light uh, offered to the scientists. This is really great because usually they, they want, you know, very, very specific outcome and... and They, they benefit from it though. Mm. So I did some discovery that ended up in, in product for them. So this was, this was uh, the idea was still for me to be, uh, it was not pure fundamental. Yeah. The idea was still to come up with things that can be useful for them. And actually more the time passed and the, the closer I was uh, to the company, uh, I learned also from, from, from such company about the world of, of industry and all the, all the, yeah, all that it implies, basically, the importance of marketing, for example, which is something that doesn't exist mm. in, in, uh, in, in classical uh, research, but is very important as soon as you go towards uh, industry. And again, like I said, it's cosmetic industry, so you can imagine the importance of marketing in such industry. Sure. So yeah, it, it it was a very very interesting very interesting part of my of my career. Yes, and as you have you have published uh, during this this six year and even patented you have two patents. Uh, if there is no if there is nothing uh, I mean confidential, could you tell us about a little bit the outcome specific outcome? What did you uh, discover and what did you uh, develop for now specifically, or is it something secret? Well, most of it is secret, <laughs> to be honest. I don't want to have any problem. But uh, there's one, the one that is uh, patented, I can tell you a little bit about it because, uh, and it's a very interesting story. And that it started actually from the moment uh, I, 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 I arrived in Miro's lab in Paris. And like I said, Miro was interested in uh, extremophile organism. And his idea was that uh, in this super resistant organism, we could find molecules or something to protect proteins against oxidation mm -hmm. because these organisms man managed to do that so maybe we can find something and that's basically was the extent of my task when i arrived in Miro's lab it's like okay then find it <laughs> <laughs> so uh i actually didn't work uh, right away on the model organism that he was working on and that's uh so i my i started by searching for a new uh, organism, uh, in part I mean, for different reason, but in, in part because of in terms of application, it's easier if you have your own uh, organism, bacteria. I was searching for bacteria, and um, and so I found I found a bacteria in Paris, actually in the in the in the falling snow. Uh, I I was searching for an environment in which I had chance to find extremophile and anything that comes from high altitude. So snow or rain but it was february so it was snowing um, have to survive actually pretty extreme uh, condition have to be in high atmosphere for a long time with extremely low temperature uh, basically no liquid water and and a relatively high level of uh, irradiation so um, i i collected this i found the bacteria and in that bacteria i found uh, i found molecules that protect protein against oxidation and this was the start of a relatively long story. So that story started in Paris. Uh, so it was more on the, on the fundamental side at the beginning. But of course, uh, the industry found a clear interest for that. We showed that it was protecting uh, cells. It was protecting basically everything mm -hmm. against almost any stress we could throw at it. So it was a very like a universal stress protectant, which as you can imagine can have interesting impact uh, for, for, for longevity, we actually uh, had a col collaboration once I was in, in, in Croatia with a lab working on Drosophila, we showed that there was also life extension, very, very, actually pretty, pretty good life extension, uh, up to 50%, if I remember well, 
uh, of this of this Drosophila once they were fed with this uh, with this uh, protein protectant that we found, and uh, and yeah, and so they, 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 that that's that's the biggest uh, let's say the biggest discovery I did, and well let's say the one that I can talk about the most, uh, and that's yeah that that was very interesting. I say. I will ask you a question, but feel free to you know to to refuse to answer. Could we expect to have some of this molecule in a in a in a nails, let's say cosmetics? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I don't think I don't think that's a secret. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's the idea, of course. Uh, I, I I don't remember which brand they're going to put into because they have three of them. Um, but yes, absolutely, that that was the idea. We we actually a very big part of the experiment that we did, especially in the in the latest years were the effect on skin cells, on skin itself, how it was protecting, and we show a lot of very interesting things. Uh, so uh, in, the, in, the, in the realm of skin and cosmetic, we had actually a lot of very, very good results. And, and yeah, it, it's, I don't know if it's already a product or it's soon gonna be, but yeah, that, that, that's mm. the idea, absolutely. Great, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to have a good, good cosmetic with a real molecule that works, you know, you know where to knock to knock out, <laughs> to knock the door out. Uh, so, uh, and then, um, then you became a, a, an entrepreneur. You launched your own biotech startups, and how uh, the transition um, emerged. You know, in your mind, uh, the idea of launching startup and becoming the CEO because it's 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 it's, it's totally a new life. You know, uh, becoming a CEO. Uh, so this is something also very interest me. Um, to understand uh, the motivation or the opportunity uh, you, you you saw uh, to, to to jump into into a new kind of uns of, of uh, uncertainty because uh, you know be becoming a CEO and a startup uh, uh, founder is something totally different once again. Yeah. So um, basically, this came little by little. So I cannot say like like I was. Uh... The, 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 my interest for aging come from all the way down to my late childhood. My, my will and interest into becoming an entrepreneur came much later. This, this is something I grew into, to be honest. Uh, and, but this was much related to my passion still because uh, at the end of the day, my wish is to find a solution, a concrete, applicable solution for everyone, obviously. And well, Fundamental research uh, only can bring you so far and industry, especially if you're in cosmetic can also bring you so far. So um, my, 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 all my research, basically, I proved that I was pretty good at finding new molecules, new anti-aging molecules. My uh, expertise in the field grew, my, my recognition in the field also uh, 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 starting to grow. And uh, well, yeah, I, I reached the point where I realized that if I want to go further, uh, I need to, well, basically to leave uh, the world in which I, I grew uh, to, start, to start my own thing. And, and, your com and, and in a certain way, your, your comfort zone, because you were at the same time completely. director, completely. director yeah. of research in a, in a famous uh, cosmetic company, group yeah. leader in a famous research institute, and you, you, you left the comfort zone to become a CEO. Yeah, that's true. That, <laughs> you're right. It's always it's always a, a step to take, both for me and for my family as well. Uh, but you know, um, you gotta do what you gotta do. So <laughs> that's uh, yeah. So did this the, the first actually project, uh, the first company that I uh, that I started. It was uh, two years ago, in 2020, middle of 2020. Uh, was a company that actually started with me as a mm -hmm. French company. And the idea was to uh, pursue this discovery on, on protecting uh, on, on molecules that can protect proteins for application for neurodegenerative disease. Because of course, application just for cosmetic is kind of a pity for a molecule that has so much potential. So um, I had personal interest in the disease, but uh, on top of that, so uh, mostly Parkinson and Alzheimer. Uh, on top of that, all these molecules, all the neurogenerative disease are linked to protein uh, aggregation, oxidation, uh, you know, for, for Parkinson, for example, is alpha-synuclein, 
protein that get oxidized, change folding, start aggregating, and, and, and will kill the dopaminergic neurons. So um, as uh, you know, for, for the, that seems to be the main first application for such, uh, for such molecule. So uh, of course we couldn't use the molecule that, that I work with, with, the, with, the, with NAOS, uh, because they, 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 they own uh, the application and, and we are still in you know, good, good relationship with them and they still finance the Institute. So the idea was to come up with new, uh, new molecules of similar activity, since I, I, I discovered not only the molecule, but how it functioned as well. Mm. Um, and, uh, and so we started a, a startup, it was 2020, it was the beginning of the, of the pandemics. Mm. And uh, well, I, I learned that it's not so easy <laughs> to start a biotech company. I had a few partners actually in France. And, uh, and so I, I, I had experience for like a year of uh, interacting with all sorts of very interesting people, top people in the industry, uh, top investors, top businessmen uh, from, well, a lot from France, but even from the rest of the world. And, uh, and basically we were searching for investors to be able to start this, this, this project uh, at, at, at a good scale, basically. Uh, and well, you know, <laughs> you, not everything works. So this project had to be put on hold. We actually even uh, closed the, the, the company that we started uh, simply because of lack of, uh, of, of funding, basically. And uh, yeah, but you know, this remains something that must be done. So it's actually possible that NAUS will pursue in that direction. I very much hope so. Um, but yeah, so this was, this was my, first, uh, my first experience as a, as a, as a businessman, let's say. And this was this was really an uh, environment that I enjoyed a lot because I, I could learn so much, and I was still very much connected to science, of course. Uh, so yeah, this this was this was something really interesting. So let me let me resume. You have a patented molecule with antioxidant with, with major antioxidant activity. You know the you know the mechanism. Uh, but because of the because of the um, let's say the economics of uh, and the, and the, and the era during the uh, COVID crisis, you ca you couldn't develop the, pro the project as far as you wanted. Um, so could we launch uh, a call eventually to industrialists or investor or entrepreneurs who would like to 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 join uh, this this project? Or is something that you want to keep it for yourself at this time? I mean. The, the, the research itself, the field and, and everything that's, that the potential behind it is really big. Uh, yeah, one thing I learned during this, this, uh, this year, uh, 2020, 2021, basically, uh, was that it's really not so simple <laughs> to, find, uh, to find investors. But uh, yeah, the, 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 the idea uh, still exists uh, and, and there's, there's a possibility to do, to do something out of that. I have other projects since that that could be founded with similar goals of, of, of trying to, to, to target neurodegenerative disease. This is, like I said, something that is even personal. There are cases in my family, uh, in, also in my wife's family, uh, of, of such neurodegenerative disease. So not just for me, but for my, my children as well. This is something that, you know, I will have to find a solution at some point because this disease... Uh, all of them actually, uh, there, there are no, no solution whatsoever right now. Absolutely. You know, Parkinson, you can, you can reduce the, 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 the trembling a little bit, but this is just uh, the, the, the output of the disease, the cause of the disease. We have no way for now to do anything about it. So yeah, this is definitely something that is worth uh, you know, going towards. So, uh, and then uh, you, you launch it, uh, the Cell Culture Lab, right? Or is it something that come later? Or how, how did, you, did you make the transition between uh, this, this first startup and, and let's say uh, the, the, the last one, a Cell Culture Lab? Yeah, so basically, and that's important for anybody who wants to start a company. So I will answer this question with, <laughs> you know, slowly. Um, I think, the main point, especially for a scientist to start a company is to meet the right people. Hmm. Because, you know, um, I am not a businessman, well, now a little bit, but uh, I definitely wasn't uh, two years ago. And uh, it, was, it was about meeting the right people. So I, 
uh, through Miro, I met these this, uh, entrepreneurs in France and we started that first, uh, that first venture. Uh, but basically at the same time, I also uh, met people in Croatia uh, that were my friends, uh, that, were, uh, that are long experienced business people. Um, and I started companies with them as well. So basically we even started a company before we even knew exactly where we we're going to go, but they, 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 they could see the potential in what I did. Mm. And they, they basically wanted to do something with me. So we, we created a company and then it took a few months to actually put things together to know exactly where we will be going. I, I actually started also. Uh, uh, if you allow me uh, an anecdote about uh, entrepreneurship, you know, usually people are seeking to have an idea, you know, the Eureka to launch the startup. And then they want to find the right co-founder co that will complement, you know, their skills and so on. And, and they never end this, this quest to find the idea or the co right co-founder. And the anecdote is the one of Helvet and Packard. You know, they were just friends, two engineers. And they say, okay, let's launch a company. But what, we, what to do? We don't know. We, we like each other. We like to work to each other. And we would see uh, later what we were, we were going to do. You know, and they launched the company. They just put their name. And you know they, they became the, the, the success uh, that we know now, or Helvet and Packard. So this is exactly what you are talking about. So you, you have friends, uh, you just launched a company and you decided to, to later to, you know, to find a, a, good, a good subject to, to develop, right? Something like that. Basically, yeah. And to be honest, I have millions of ideas. So I wasn't worried about, about finding one. And of course we had an overall idea of the, of the direction, but we, we had, uh, yeah, but yeah, this is a similar, similar situation. I think people matters a lot mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes people matters more than the idea. So this is, this is true. And, and I've heard it uh, several times since now, I meet a lot of people in this, in this uh, industry, uh, finding the right people and being able to grow something uh, is sometimes more important than, than, than the product itself. Absolutely. So let's now talk about Cell, Cell Culture Lab, uh, if you if you want, yes. uh, and let's let's dig deep into into what what is this new venture because it's uh, it's uh, it's very exciting. You want to rejuvenate the skin, uh, and this is a major topic uh, with a very po powerful economic potential. So so could you could you present us Cell Culture Lab? Yeah. So just to put back a little bit of, of history, I mean, like I said, I worked for many, many years into the, into the cosmetic industry. So if anything, I learned a lot about skin uh, during my years there. And to be honest, I also learned that you cannot do so much with just cosmetic. There's only so much you can do by just putting something on the skin for this very simple reason that skin is by definition a wall. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to protect you from the outside. So it's not supposed to be so easy to get in, right? So. Um, of course, after reading for years about uh, biology of aging of the skin, uh, I, I, my understanding was that one of the key points of, of aging is what we call stem cell exhaustion. This is something that is one of the main, you know, uh, uh, in, that, in that list of the main cause of aging, it's, it's, it's up there. Uh, and basically for skin, so skin is, you know, several layers, but the, the, the core one is called the dermis. And the main cells in the dermis are called fibroblasts. And these cells, they are sort of strange stem cell-like cells. And they are the ones who build the whole matrix. So they make uh, the collagen, hyaluronic acid, uh, the elastin. So all the things that you heard about that gives basically the texture of the skin, but also maintain its health. So uh, with age, we lose these cells. It's very simple, it's very well known. It's proven over and over. Uh, little by little, we are losing this cell. We have less and less, and that's why this this uh, this well, the whole skin is is, is collapsing. Little, let's say little by little, and um, then it seems pretty obvious that if you could put them back, if you could take some cells and 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 grow them and and put them back, this would have a very uh, very interesting rejuvenating uh, effect. And this is something that is already being. Uh, you know, investigated in many, many different uh, areas. The, the, the idea of replacing cells that are missing, it's, it's actually pretty obvious, honestly, when you think about it. But um, 
yeah, it was not, uh, it didn't exist at all in Europe. There were things done in, in, in US in that, in that direction, but nothing at all in, in Europe. And so that's, that's how, the, that's how the, 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 the project started. And we, we created that company, which is actually a B2B company. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't uh, we don't provide uh, we don't provide uh, let's say uh, service. You don't invite patients at, at your office to, to inject them. No, exactly not. I mean, I'm not a medical doctor. <laughs> I'm a researcher. So um, we our our we work with uh, with clinics, mm -hmm. and we work with labs. And uh, they, they they so the, the labs are the ones who are doing all the cellular cultivation and the clinics are the one who are doing the, the, the biopsy to get a little bit piece of skin from which uh, fibroblasts are extracted and grow. And uh, to some degree, fibroblasts are even rejuvenating during the process of cultivation. And then they are re-injected uh, again in the clinic uh, in, the, in the dermis itself. So just a question because I, I noticed on your website on your website that you rejuvenate you know the the fibroblast because the first thing that that you know popped in my mind when I read your your protocol I, I, I wondered if you took uh, fibroblast from an someone who is already quite uh, senior you know the fibroblasts are already old so um, how do you rejuvenate these cells um, do you have a particular protocol uh, uh, could you talk about it, or is it something secret? Or unfortunately, I cannot talk about it. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's really. I mean, uh, yeah, we we there's only there's only that that's actually a key point uh, of of the of the of the thing that we provide that uh, I I cannot uh, I cannot reveal uh, in in detail, unfortunately. But no yeah, problem. that's the idea. We we did measurements and we saw that the the, the fibroblast under a very specific cultivation condition. Uh, would show a uh, sign of rejuvenation rather than the other way around. Because normally when you cultivate cells, uh, like you were pointing out, especially if you start with cells from older donor, uh, then you have obvious signs of aging. So being able to reverse that to some degree uh, really makes uh, the, the, the process much more efficient because just so the, 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 the process that we're using is called autologous fibroblast injection. So autologous means your own cells. Uh, and uh, clearly, when the cells come from an older person, the, 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 the success rate uh, should be much, much lower. Uh, if you manage to rejuvenate them to some degree, then yeah, of course, it works much, much better. And we, we really had very, very, very nice uh, results uh, from, from, this, uh, well, from this technique, let's say. I, I will try, but of course, you are free to not answer, but the rejuvenation protocol is based on the cell culture or do, is, it, is it something with, I don't know, you know, uh, transfection, transit, transitory no, no, no. transfection? So or... that, that's actually a very important point. <laughs> you no, know, there are no transfection. There are, okay. we are, we are, because this is something, I think there's a, there's a, there's a lab in UK who is doing that. Right now, uh, uh, the, this, uh, you know, the, the ability to turn cells into uh, pluripotent stem cells. So mm -hmm. the, the IPS, mm -hmm. uh, you know, process in which you add three or four uh, molecules, uh, proteins actually, and, and you manage to turn them back. Uh, this is something that is being investigated. Honestly, I don't want to go in that direction uh, simply because if you manage to reach the IPS uh, stage, then uh, you're not guaranteed that the cells will turn back into fibroblasts afterward. And they, they are whatever they want. And yeah, and there's a risk of, of, uh, of uh, cancerization of mm -hmm. these cells. So this is not good. Fibroblasts themselves, skin fibroblasts especially, don't turn into, into uh, cancers. But IPSC, they can. <laughs> so, uh, so no, we, we don't use that. It's all about the process of cultivation. It has nothing to do with, uh, we, we don't alter the cells. It's still, your own cells, they just are a bit younger, and uh, yeah. Your own cells, uh, and they are they are already let's say programmed to, to become um, dermis and hypodermis uh, producing factors such as fibroblasts. So you don't need you know, to, to 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 orient the iPS cell into the fibroblast lineages. So of course it makes a lot of sense. And and but I have also another question about the fibroblasts. Um, 
you of course it's very easy you know you take a piece of skin and you you you, you cultivate your culture you expand the fibroblast but you could you could have also imagine uh, imagine to to select you know uh, with the with the with facts uh, some stem cell more more stem cells skin stem cells uh, why did why did why did, why did why didn't you um, choose that path okay so um yeah so some people are working with stem cells uh, and and even try to use it for uh, skin rejuvenation uh, they use the mesenchymal stem cells mm -hmm. because these are the ones that are the easiest to get and they're, they're also the one with the most so when you hear about stem cell let's say 80 percent of the time it's mesenchymal stem cells Mm -hmm. And these cells, you can get them either from the bone, which is not so easy, but you also can get them from fat. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's much easier to get for most people. Uh, so it's like liposuction. And like you're saying, through facts, you can isolate the cells. You can also grow them, and then you could inject them in the skin. So the problem is these mesenchymal stem cells, they can turn into fat cells. They can turn into bone cells and into joint cells, if I remember well. Uh, but definitely they cannot turn into fibroblast. So um, our main interest was fibroblast because only fibroblast can, can do that. So, but the people who are doing that, so when you inject stem cells, the stem cells are producing factors that help other cells to grow. So they still have some good effect, let's say, but it's not nearly as good as if you were invest, uh, injecting directly the fibroblast. So mm. it's, it's the main difference. Another potential good aspect. And so we're keeping it in mind for future development, to be honest. So your question is right on, on, on point because this is definitely something we are considering. Um, the, not only the dermis is growing old, but the hypodermis. Hypodermis is basically where you store the fat. And so then here, it would be, it would be making a lot of sense because uh, especially on the face, there are places where you are gaining fat, but there are places where there's, there's a loss uh, actually. And so, being able to put that back uh, could be could be useful. So combination of both that technique could be uh, could be quite interesting. So we'll get there at some point. But yeah, That's very it. interesting, very interesting. And by the way, and I like the the your protocol because it's very uh, simple. You know, uh, no no fact selection, no IPS uh, uh, producing IPS. All of this uh, supplementary step can bring you know risk of contamination and. And um, and when you are in on the clinic, you know when you have to inject biological product, particularly living cells, uh, in 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 patient, you have also this you know this this supplementary risk of bringing, you know, pathogen, you know, so very very complicated. So it, more you add a step, more you brings risk on the on the table. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, anybody who is working in in, in cell culture in general, but anything like like you say. Contamination is the risk number one. It's the, something people get obsessed with that really, and they should be. Uh, so everything is controlled, of course. So during the whole process, there are measurements also to make sure that they are in contamination. Uh, even so, I mean, people have immune systems. So the, the, normally they should get rid of it, but you don't want to take the risk. So clearly everything is controlled uh, particularly well uh, at that level. So we're working with partner labs that are ex especially good at that. So this is... Uh, so, uh, you, at what stage uh, you are now? I mean, uh, do you master everything from uh, from I mean, uh, the biopsy to the expansion to the injection? Or you are still in the research and development stage, uh, or, or the product? I mean, re is ready to sell to to clinicians and to to aesthetic doctors? Uh, yeah, so the, the product is ready. We already have a product. Uh, right now, the, the, the company, we'll talk about that maybe a little after, the, the company goals now is, is expansion toward a more market. Uh, when it comes to the R&D, so the company is very young and uh, R&D is very expensive. <laughs> so uh, we, are, uh, we are actually, and we will do that through the expansion. Uh, we will get some degree of investment for the company to be able to, to pursue it further. But uh, so again, system is working very well, but uh, you know, as a scientist still in mind, uh, I'm a perfectionist and I will always make it better. I will always find ways to, uh, to improve uh, the, 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 the protocol. And, and you know, we also have to follow what is coming out there uh, I mean, uh, you know, I, I was uh, 
uh, invited last week as a, as a guest speaker for Longevity Summit in Dublin. And, uh, you know, I have to go to this kind of conference, uh, not only because it's a good opportunity to meet uh, people in the industry, uh, investors, other uh, biotech uh, CEOs, but also because of the research. So making sure that I'm at the top of what exists in basically all field of aging is the core of, of my job and, and always will be. So hopefully I will never go too far away from, from science or else I will become almost useless. So yeah, so definitely there will be, there will be more, uh, more improvement in, in, in various direction, uh, but this will come in a second part. So maybe in a year or two. So the product is ready. <laughs> Sorry. The product is ready. I see, um, uh, we can see on your, on your website that there is a before and after um, uh, testing also, you know, with picture with, with the ladies and, and gentlemen who, um, who, have been, um, who have been injected and that you have a very, very impressive, you know, uh, before and after pictures. Uh, but this this picture are let's say uh, clinical uh, essays or, 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 um, or exp experiment. But do you have right now client individual client? Yeah, we at do. The, at, the, at the end of the of the value chain, you know, who who has been injected by uh, an aesthetic uh, physician or or dermatologist by by your protocol? Yes, 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 we do. Yeah. yeah. So the 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 whole uh, protocol and everything was validated already. And uh, so we, we do have uh, uh, we do have customers in the company. So the company starts making money, which is good. Uh, quite recently, actually. But uh, but yes, on, on parallel of that, we're also doing some study uh, to 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 validate it even further, and also for marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. So we need to have like good uh, measurement, not just picture. Of course, pictures are, are the core because at the end, people want to see differences. But we also have uh, ways to measure uh, the, 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 the progress, let's say. There are different tools to do that. And, uh, and we want to have like more, 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 precise, uh, more precise data, basically, to really quantify, uh, quantify the efficiency of the system. Basically. Mm -hmm. And that's actually quite uh, interesting because the, there, are, there are a lot of variability. So the, for some people, the results will be you, you can gain basically anywhere between five to 30 years of, of skin aging back with that system. And that's quite, that's quite a big difference, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and as you saw on the, on the website, we had very impressive results with, uh, with people of 70 years old, uh, you know, with, uh, with like very mm -hmm. deep wrinkle in the, in the neck, which is actually uh, a very a very big problem for the aesthetic industry because they don't know how to fix it. So uh, if you in inject Botox, for example, um, it, it's not going to be it's not going to be working very well here. Yeah, there's no muscle, you know. In the, in the... Yeah, exactly. So uh, we actually have the best results in in that area. So for that, we are very competitive. Our we will uh, outcompete most people, I think, with with just that result. Uh, on top of that, the dermatologists we're working with, uh, they are interested in, in other application. Uh, they want to help people, that's their, that's their job as a, as a doctor. And even so, we haven't yet go toward the pure medical aspect of it. There's potential, but we haven't been there yet. Uh, we already, uh, beside pure just wrinkles, let's say, and, and skin sagging, uh, we already seen some people who had uh, improvement for other things, like for example, uh, Acne scar, mm -hmm. something that make like holes in your skin. Uh, this can help definitely. Um, all sorts of uh, redness, or mm -hmm. that was my case, for example, uh, all over the face. So very uh, clear skin like this one uh, would be uh, much much improved by basically thickening the skin towards that uh, because that's that's what happened when you inject fibroblasts. The skin become a little bit thicker, stronger, healthier. So all these redness things tends to disappear. There's a, so we are, we are trying to see um, how we can help more people, uh, not just you know uh, to look better, but to 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 feel better <laughs> for themselves. And and hopefully in the future uh, we might also go toward more medical application. But again, we're not there yet. If you allow me, just to come back to a previous question about the rejuvenation of the the cell. Uh, expanded from the biopsy. Do you do you rejuvenate the cells 
systematically, I mean, if a young donor, let's say 40 years old, give a biopsy, uh, um, gives a biopsy, uh, do you rejuvenate the cells or, or you, do you have a kind of, you know, a threshold, you know, say you say after six, 60 uh, years old, we, we will rejuvenate systematically or how, how does, how do you rejuvenate? Not, not, not the technique, of course, but. Uh, now this is part of the process. This is part of the process. And basically the idea is that uh, cultivation by itself is a stress. Mm -hmm. So when you cultivate cells, you have what we call passage effect. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the, the, the cells are in an environment where they are at, uh, you know, 20% oxygen, mm -hmm. amount of oxygen 18 uh, in, the, in, the, in the air, which is much higher than the amount of oxygen that they would feel in the, in the body, which is about 5%. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, this actually is a stress. So the first thing that we do, and I have really big uh, effect, is to make the, it's like a spa for the cells, really. Like we are trying to put them in the best possible condition so that they don't get stressed by the cultivation. And this we do systematically. And uh, on top of that, of course, there's a lot of steps within the, the, the cultivation that has been optimized. And this results in overall uh, rejuvenation of cells. But we do that no matter what, because we know that the cells like it, that it's good mm. for them. So okay. we're, not, uh, we're not selecting which one will go towards a specific. So this might change in the future if we come up with like a more high tech uh, you know, if we ever went toward like gene modification, which is not going to happen anytime soon, um, then yeah, maybe we would be more selective on what kind of uh, cells, what kind of uh, people samples would go into what kind of treatment. For the moment, it's a solution that fits all. Okay, this is great because uh, there is no different protocol based on age. So you have the same protocol. So this is very important. Uh, for for you know for the for the production manufacture and and yeah. the commercialization of the product so it's it's more more it's simple more it's easier more, better it is yeah. uh, faster it is to go to the market so um, uh, if I'm a dermatologist mm -hmm. with my own clinic you know I clinic you know uh, liberal uh, you know activity. Uh, doing some aesthetic medicine also uh, can I uh, contact you and, and or, or is it something right now not not I mean uh, um, because you say you, you work with B2B with clinic but yeah. how big are the clinics you know is it big aesthetic clinics or, or the, the individual dermatologist working in the city can can contact you and and offer your 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 protocol to his Swiss patient <clears throat> so the most important part to understand is that uh, we are working on the country basis because each country has their own regulation. Even with the EU, each country has their own regulation. And uh, it's important to follow the regulation of the country in which you're working. So basically, each country would require not only to have clinics, but also to have their own lab. And the lab has to be under the, 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 the criteria that is defined by the country. Clinic so, um, yeah. So if you are in Croatia, uh, then uh, is fine because we already have set everything there for that or working with labs that are on on uh, you know working with the criteria that are required there and uh, then yes uh, in theory it doesn't really matter the size but we we prefer to have not too many clinics because that's not the idea mm -hmm. have one or two clinics per city would be uh, would be enough uh, we prefer the one who already have a certain size uh, so that they, they, they have already the, the, the clientele. We're also developing a part of the business, which is about uh, medical tourism. Mm -hmm. so we live in a beautiful, sunny country, you know, Croatia. Mm -hmm. And uh, medical tourism is something that is really developing there. And, uh, you know, Europe is a relatively small continent, so you can come to Croatia uh, and, and get the treatment done, uh, you know, easily. There's already dentistry that has been uh, developed like that. There's a lot of things, actually. And, uh, and yeah, so we have partners who are just our representative for a country. So for example, uh, in Belgium, we have that in place. And, uh, and their job is to basically uh, advertise uh, for the treatment and uh, send, uh, send customers to, to Croatia. So this very is- So very interesting. Awesome. You, need to, you need to, you choose country based on on the, on the fact that they have all the value chain, you know, already there, you know, um, laboratories uh, with clinical grade who can, who can do the, 
the, the, the expansion of the cells in, in a good condition. Uh, all also uh, aesthetic clinics uh, with good, with good um, let's say, um, um, uh, how can I say it? Uh, uh, clean, you know, uh, with the clean techniques and, and good professionals working there. Uh, so this is the kind of the country you 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 seek to for targeting your your commercial expansion. Yeah, something like that. So right now, this yeah, we are in the point of the company, even so the company is pretty young, uh, but the, the the development abroad uh, becomes almost an obligation because many many people are coming to us and asking, can we do it in our country? Uh, this happened to a point that you wouldn't believe. So people are really, really interested in this. Uh, in some cases, we have to tell them no, because we know that in that country specifically, it would be too complicated. France would be one of these, for example. Regulation is very strict there, and, and it, would, it wouldn't uh, be easy to, to do it there. So for such country, we will develop more the medical tourism part than, the, than developing uh, the, the network of, of clinics. But then, yeah, there are some countries. So we are in discussion, for example, with uh, countries like... Uh, uh, Mexico, US, uh, UK, uh, China, so big markets mm -hmm. in which, uh, so for some, it's already pretty advanced discussion. For some, we just started. But the idea is, uh, well, it's almost, I mean, it's kind of a franchising uh, system in which we will develop in, in each country and we will either work with uh, expert uh, labs or even set one because setting a lab is not that complicated and it's good to have full control over what's happening. Mm -hmm. you know, make sure that everything is, you know, as we want them, as we want it to be. So uh, the, the, the expansion will probably also go with the possibility of, of developing our own lab. So this is, uh, this is what the, the future will bring us, hopefully. It's interesting what you, are, what you said about fr the franchise uh, strategy, because it means that you have a, um, a uh, what's say an entry barrier uh, and you talk about already about your protocol of, of expansion that is uh, a secret because it's it's, it's helped to self rejuvenate during 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 the expansion is it is it the, the only only um proprietary uh, industrial pro uh, pi that you have in, um sorry uh, uh, nixta industrial yeah, yeah. property uh, ip yeah ip yeah uh well I mean, yes, I would say that that's the that's the that's because the, I don't I, I don't want to offend you, but if you talk about uh, taking fibroblasts, expand and inject them into 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 the skin, it's something you know. For me, it's quite uh, you know quite uh, uh, you know quite common you know. But no, 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 I'm no, pretty sure course. I'm pretty sure because you have a strong background and you, you know what you are doing that you have something very very protectable in, in, in this in this business. Uh, absolutely, and it is. It is. It is. Uh, it, it is the case. It's not. It's not nearly as simple as it looks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we are not too worried about uh, other people doing the same thing. Like I said, it does exist uh, something similar. Let's say in some countries, but we yeah we we, we made it such that uh, our technology is uh, is better in many ways. That's easy to claim, but of course it, it's all down to the results. So we know that uh, we are not facing the same issue that, that uh, others are, are, are facing. For example, the, the fact that it worked less well on, on older people for most, uh, most of, this, uh, uh, of this strategy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, the, 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 of course, the expansion depends, of course, on, on, the, on this ability to, to, to provide uh, this, this know-how to each of the, of, the, of the branch. I don't know how to call that, but yeah. Fantastic. So let me make some resume of uh, what you have said about uh, um, cell, uh, about your new venture, uh, donc Cell Culture Lab. Uh, you have uh, launched uh, a new way to rejuvenate skin by uh, re by injecting the, the cells of the patient itself in you know in, a, in an autologous manner, uh, rejuvenated ex vivo, and then injected into the into the skin of the patient. This is great because it, there is no rejection. And they have uh, their own cells rejuvenated with your protocol, and they have they can see the, the picture on your website. They have amazing uh, outcomes for 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 the skin, and they last five years, uh, more than five years, because it's it's living cell that doing the job inside the inside the skin, not not just you know injection of 
of the Botox. So, you know, you only can see the collagen that, you know, they last a couple of months or yeah. you have to inject, inject, and then we, we see the, the, um, the, you know, the, 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 um, the result on, on, on the face of some ladies who, who abuse of Botox and et cetera. This is living cell, your own cells that do the job uh, in your skin. So they, they, they rejuvenate you. Uh, so this is great. Your company has a protocol that uh, allow you, allows you to, uh, to rejuvenate the cell. This is something proprietary. All, all the value chain also is very complicated and know how that you, you, you master. Um, what can I say more? You are already a um, revenue stage startup. This is great. Uh, and uh, do you have co-founder you would like to, to, to say hello or to employee? Uh, um... Yeah, so the, 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 my, my, for, this, for this company, I, I started with a Belgian uh, businessman, uh, Ronnie Hayson, who has, um, well, he's been a businessman his whole life and his father as well. So he grew up in that uh, environment, different kind of business. But uh, yeah, I, it would have been very difficult for me to, to start from scratch with someone like that. So I learn, uh, I learn a lot from, from working with him, that's for sure. And, uh, and I also have a very good, uh, very good business partner in, uh, who is Croatian, Marin Bosotina, uh, who, uh, who was in a closer, uh, let's say, business. He was in the uh, blood analysis business all over the country and even abroad. And uh, and yeah, I, I mean, without without partners like that, I I, I couldn't do uh, what we're doing now, and I couldn't be where I am now. Yeah. Great. Many more, actually, <laughs> so many more. We are reaching the end of this interview, so uh, if you allow me, uh, some last question uh, about about you as a CEO. Are you are you happy as a CEO as a as an entrepreneur, or or do you miss? I mean, the 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 researcher. Um, do your research your uh, position or so um, I I haven't regretted one second since mm -hmm. the moment I took that decision I really embraced it I enjoy it very much mm -hmm. uh, this is something that is very very fulfilling you don't have a day that is similar as the previous or the next so uh, this is something that is very exciting I, I got to meet a lot of very very interesting people uh, of, of many, many different branches that I wouldn't get to meet uh, otherwise. And luckily for me, I'm still, uh, I'm still a scientist, actually. Mm. So I don't get to miss it because I still get to be, you know, like, like I said, I was, in a, I, was a, I was a speaker at a conference, science conference last week. I will be again in a, in a couple of months. And, uh, you know, uh, within the, the scientific community, I'm still at my place, which is, which is great. Uh, otherwise, I would definitely miss it. I mean, I still love science. Uh, very much and this is still my my main uh my core motivation and and, and also my my high level of expertise obviously so I, i'm very happy that i can do both i always like to do several things at the same time and I, i'm very happy that i can do both yeah. fantastic uh, and could you uh, as a conclusion offer some piece of advice to phd student and postdoc who would like you know to launch uh, their own tech startup and you know they are in this position to hesitate you know because what happened if I left the academia? Uh, uh, there is this uncertainty in in the in the in the, in the world that I don't know anything. Uh, do you have some couple of advice for them? Yeah. So I think first of all, it's important uh, not to get um, how to say uh, into the false impression that to be uh, to be an entrepreneur you have to be twenty five. You know, uh, especially in biotech, it's, it's good to have experience, really. Uh, you, you need to grow uh, to the point where you can start your own biotech. Of course, if you're 25 and you're ready for it, why not? But, you know, there are some things that takes time and, and expertise uh, takes time. Uh, that's the first thing. And, and like I said earlier, really the critical point, especially for someone who is a scientist, is to find the right partner. So mm -hmm. you, um, I would really encourage people to go to this kind of conference uh, where you have a diverse crowd, not just scientists, but also other entrepreneurs and, uh, and investors and start talking to these people. Because uh, you know, that, that's when the connections are made and you, you build a whole network uh, 
And, and honestly, when you are driven by passion, it's not very hard to, to, to create connection with people like that because they, they usually share your passion. Uh, they are at, at, at similar events, so they are, they are interested by the same things. And, and, and things really come more easily than one would think. You know, if, uh, they, they, the, the connection arrives uh, easily and, and that's, that's how you can, then, then, then they will even tell you if you're ready or if, if your project is ready or your idea is ready to be turned into, into, uh, into a company. Fantastic. Um, and maybe if you would like to recommend us a book, a podcast, or a film or, uh, that inspire you, or even taught you a skill uh, in business or in entrepreneurship, or anything that you think that it's important for for younger people to 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 you know to to to, um, to embrace. Yeah, that's that that's a tougher question, honestly, <laughs> because I I don't read nearly as much as I should, uh, and I, be, I get it, my it knowledge from other. So it can be a book or a movie you 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 know you read or saw or watch when you were younger. You know, no, no matter uh-huh. if it was yesterday, it could be something. Well, I mean, I watch I watch science fiction and I read science fiction almost exclusively, and it is a source. It is a source of of uh, of motivation. I, I I'm I've been reading uh, recently the Three Body Problem. Uh, it's a classic. Well, it's, it became a classic uh, of science fiction. It's more towards physics than biology, but uh, I like science fiction because it show you the world as it could be. And as a scientist, this is also the way that we see the world. We don't live so much in the past or even in the present. We like to project ourselves in the future. Mm-hmm. And especially when, our, when the goal is trying to find a cure for, 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 for aging, then you have to project yourself in the future. Science fiction is really, is really good for that. And there are a lot of, of uh, great, uh, great authors and great, uh, great books and, and movies that, that, yeah. I agree, science fiction, science fiction is great. Uh, it's uh, it's fantastic now, particularly American ones, mm-hmm. uh, because uh, they are you know they have a sci- top level scientists who are consultants in, in every movie and, and, and series, so they, they have their science more, fiction yeah. are, are usually evangelization of the product what American are building you know so so it's great. Thank you so much uh, for being my guest. It was a real pleasure to have you. A great honor because you have you are a very precious. Um, uh, scientists, entrepreneur. So we are very glad to you know to have you in Europe. So I wish you all all the best for for your new venture and hope to meet you in person in the next uh, month or year. Okay, thank hopefully. you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me, and this was this was really interesting for me as well.